Good morning to you, sir. Uh, Corey, I'll let you kick this off since and give him a nice introduction. You're wearing his hoodie this morning. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm wearing, the, you know, no way, no how. Um, Rob Parker, I mean, hey, what can I say? I was 18 years old, fresh out of high school, running to the guy a couple of times outside of the barbershop on um, Sporty Cuss on Seven Mile. <laughs> Expressed my interest in um, sports journalism. He gave me his gave me his book. Told me to gave me his number. Next thing I know, a couple days later, I'm on Parker and the Man, and listening in on the show. And next thing I know, I'm an intern on Sports Rap TV and one of the great Detroit sports writers, icons, and not just be in Detroit and beyond. So. Not enough, I can say. I could go on day by Rob. That's why I wanted you to do the yeah, intro, man. Good for job. sure. <laughs> Uh, Rob, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, do you have anything kind to say about Corey? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm very, very proud of where Corey has gone and all the hard work he's put in. And, you know, I, I, the idea of, um, you know, when, when someone wants help and, and reaches out or whatever, if I can help them, I, I'm, that's just part of who I am. So I'm I'm very very proud of Corey and where he is and uh, congrats to you guys on your uh, venture and what you guys are doing uh, back in Detroit. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and I mean, obviously, you know, there's a ton of stuff going on in Detroit sports right now. I'm sure you keep up with it. Is there anything that's standing out to you at the moment of something that we should be looking out for or something that you're excited to see? Well, mostly uh, everything's bad there, my God. You know, like the, the teams are, are, are pretty bad. So Detroit had a had a very nice run when I was still back there um, before I left five years ago. And, you know, uh, the Red Wings were always good, no more. Uh, the Pistons during that era of, uh, you know, going to work basketball was amazing. That's no more. Um the Lions are the Lions, so they never have one playoff win since 1957. So there's a lot of things uh, that are uh, and not happen in, De in Detroit. So I think you have to look at it as a rebuild and hope to see which team can put it together back uh, first and win a championship. If I had to bet on which team would win a championship first, I might say the Detroit Tigers. I just don't see, like, the Pistons. Okay. I would go for the Tigers. Yeah, we did a Twitter poll on that, and most of the fans here uh, believe in the Red Wings more, and we think that's because of Steve Eiserman. Yeah, and what he did down in Tampa Bay, obviously, did a great job in, uh, with that organization. So I can understand why, and plus, you know, they are the team that has won, you know, more championships and more recently, so that makes sense. But I don't know. I just think the Tigers, it's been a long time since 1984, and we've seen other teams have opportunities. I know it's going to take a little bit of time, but I don't think it's out of out of reach. Hey, I'll do an action real quick. What do you think about what Troy Weaver is doing with the Pistons just real quick? Um... I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't see them competing. I know he's made a lot of changes or whatnot. I think some of the players that they got, you know, uh, day late, dollar short, you know, getting players um, who were great at one point. So I, I, I don't see them in the mix. And, and they probably need to find um, some sort of star, or get like a star in the draft that's really going to, turn the franchise around uh, it's hard to imagine that where the Pistons are now compared to where they were not not that long ago now we here's the real thing we want to talk about is that Tom Brady <laughs> <laughs> I was going to wait to pop it on him but go ahead I, Corey. Thought, I thought he had a typo on this article right <laughs> I've never seen Lote in my life with Tom Brady. I've always heard the word GOAT. We've all only heard the word GOAT. <laughs> so, Corey, go ahead, explain this article. I, w I mean, he said that Tom Brady, who I consider the greatest of all time, is the luckiest of all time, and that Brady has benefited from so much fortune of other teams' misfortunes, most recently the misfortune of Drew Brees and his terrible play in the NFC uh, Divisional Round. So, why is 
Tom Brady, the you come up with so many different um, names from a why now the loat. Tom Brady is the loat, and, and I call him the luckiest of all time because when you really look at his career, dating back to almost 19 years ago yesterday, with the Tuck Rule, where Tom Brady coughed up the football with a minute and a half to go, and the referees gave him back the football. That might have changed his entire career if the Raiders, who recovered the ball, kept the ball, and, and that was the year that Brady and them went to the first Super Bowl and won. So that would have changed a lot of things. So when you look back to his career, in that playoff run back then, uh, 19 years ago, how many touchdowns did Tom Brady throw in the postseason? Super Bowl and postseason. Anybody know? In that playoff run? Yep. The, the first year that uh, the Patriots... I don't offhand, no. Okay, he threw one touchdown in the entire postseason. <laughs> okay, so there's the tuck rule. When they beat the Carolina Panthers, their kicker kicked the ball out of bounds with the score tied late in the game. He moved the ball up some yards. They kicked the game-winning field goal. Then we could go to... There's just so many games and so many situations where Tom Brady has been the beneficiary of it. It doesn't mean that he's not a great player or he doesn't capitalize on those moments. We saw in Seattle, they had the best running back in the league with beast mode at the one and a half yard line and two downs to try to get in the end zone. And they throw an, you know, Russell Wilson throws the ball into a crowded end zone. And of course, it was an interception and Seattle lost that game. Atlanta was up 28-3. to They were at the 22-yard line with a chance to kick a field goal to go up by 11. Instead of running the ball forward three downs and kicking a field goal, which would have put the game out of reach, they go to pass the ball. There's a sack. There's a uh, holding call. There are all kinds of other things that go on which changed the course of the game. And, of course, they don't get – they get out of field goal range. Tom Brady ties the game, and then the Patriots win it in overtime. And now this year, it's the same thing. Look look at his path to the NFC Championship game. He plays a Washington team that was under 500, right? A quarterback who's making his second start in the history of the in, in the NFL, his first in the playoffs, who nobody even knew his name, uh, right? That, Heineke, uh, so, <laughs> so he gets game one, and then Drew Brees, who's a Hall of Fame quarterback, throws three picks and sets up a short field. Tom Brady didn't win that game. You guys can go ahead with that false narrative. Tom Brady had less than 200 yards. When they had to drive on their own, Tom Brady couldn't even move. They couldn't move the ball. What did they do? They got I mean, three turn four turnover. He had 199 turnover. yards. Oh, yeah, that's a and big a touchdown, day. and he ran one in. Rob yeah, Parker, a... from what I'm hearing and reading throughout this article, sounds like you got a lot of excuses. <laughs> because, listen, you are, you are one of the, and you will always be one of the greatest, especially in Detroit sports, and I respect you so much, so let me preface it with that. But when you talk about Tom Brady, and in my eyes, the greatest of all time, but you look at what he does, he even could bring the Buccaneers to where they are. Their first playoff win since 2002 since winning the Super Bowl. You can't argue that this guy is not the greatest of all time. And I know you just brought up a lot of facts, things that I didn't even realize. <laughs> that is a lot of luck. But you in your article start talking about how Tom Brady should have thrown three interceptions. What did he throw against the Saints? Zero. So you can't say no, that. I, that. But I'm just saying it, a lot of things have gone his way. And here's the other part, that he's not the GOAT. A, his team was busted for cheating in Spygate. Tom Brady was suspended for Deflategate, where he basically uh, uh, derailed the the um, investigation into what had happened with Tom Brady. And don't tell me he had a hundred text messages with a ball boy, and he didn't know he didn't know the ball boy and had no <laughs> contact. But <laughs> hey, I don't know is, her when I'm texting either, man. <laughs> Well, he was doing a lot of drunk texting, uh, apparently. <laughs> but, my, but my point is, Tom Brady's not the greatest. Joe Montana's the greatest. He was 4-0 in Super Bowls. He never lost. He had 11 touchdowns, no picks. He won three MVPs. 
He won two with Jerry Rice. He won two without Jerry Rice. And he was never accused. There was never any cheating involved when it came to, to, to his career and what went down. To me, that's the GOAT. I look at Michael Jordan and I look at Joe Montana. Tom Brady's had a great career. He's not the greatest. The first three Super Bowls were about Adam Vinatieri and the Patriots defense. And the last three Super Bowls have been mostly on luck. And one last thing, the last Super Bowl he won against the Rams, Tom Brady had no touchdowns, one pick, one fumble, and a 13-3 win. And yet, right against the Rams, who had a high-powered offense, all the talk is about Tom Brady won the Super Bowl, when in reality it was their defense. And that's my point. It wasn't about Tom Brady. I hope the Lions can get one-tenth of that Tom Brady luck at some point in my life. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll take that luck all day. I hear you. It ain't, it, it, ain't, it ain't about all luck. I mean, they need to do the right thing in the front office. The Lions to have one playoff win since 1957, an indictment of ownership and an indictment of the people that they've hired. They've made a lot of mistakes in hiring people, and uh, that's why the Lions are where they are. We used to laugh at the Saints, laugh at the Bucks, laugh at teams like that, the, uh, the Cardinals, because all those teams were in the same category with the Lions. They had not won a Super Bowl or been to a Super Bowl. And guess what? The Bucks won a Super Bowl. The Cardinals went to a Super Bowl. And if it wasn't for a last-minute touchdown, had a chance to win one. And um, and uh, what was the other team? And, and um, what did I say? Tampa. So they've all gone on to win, everybody except the Lions. What do you think about um, the, the Lions hire of Brad Holmes as the GM and their potential rumored hire of Dan Campbell as the new coach? I mean, Holmes has worked his way up. He was a part of the Rams organization. You know, it's a crapshoot. Nobody really knows. It's not as if he has a track record as a GM, but everybody gets an opportunity. The one thing the Lions have done is they've given a lot of people their first crack at being you know the boss or being a head coach for the first time we saw it uh, with uh, morning wig and Marinelli who was never a head coach even in high school or college get the first head coaching job was in the NFL so um, I, I think these guys I have to wait and see there's just no track record for me to say whether they're going to succeed or fail but um, so, so that's what the Lions have done. Sure, would it have been great for them to go out and get somebody who's battle-tested or who has a proven winner. They did do that with Steve Mariucci, who was the coach, um, you know, and it just didn't work out because Matt Millen, who had never been a GM, was terrible. Probably the worst general manager in the history of sports. Can't argue that. <laughs> uh, question about Calvin Johnson. We were touching on it earlier today. What do you think the Lions should do with that whole situation about him wanting a little bit of money back and them not budging, and now him potentially going in the Hall of Fame not wearing the Lions Honolulu blue with pride? First of all, I'm, I'm not giving anybody any money who quit on the team. I mean, I just don't un The whole idea of it is nonsense. If you didn't want to play, you know what happens? You don't You don't get paid. I don't. I don't. He should just move on from that. I don't think the Lions, it's like hot holding the, the team hostage. Give me my money, even though I walk down on you. And the same thing with the Hall of Fame. I, I get the numbers. Can you please tell me the playoff games that the Lions won when Calvin Johnson was there? Some numbers can be <laughs> I'm just being honest. You know, like I even, you know, the, the Stat Patford numbers. Some of those numbers just are bogus. They, they came after the game were decided when defenses backed off. He's a great player, but I just don't I, – I, I, I don't see that as a Hall of Fame player, and I don't see why the Lions should have to give a guy money who quit. So you don't see him Hall of Fame at all, not just first ballot, just not in the Hall of Fame? My, no, I, I'm a baseball Hall of Fame voter, and, and to me, there should be no question about it. When you got to debate whether somebody belongs and you have to look at, you know – try to figure out a way to get somebody in. And I'm not blaming that all of the losses were on him, but it's just hard. I, I don't see – he doesn't jump out to me as, oh, yeah, he has to be in the Hall of Fame. Did he put up some, wow. some guardy no, – sure he did. But I don't know about the impact. I mean, he brings up the biggest point, though, the playoff wins. 
What did he really? I mean, yeah. yes, obviously the impact he did, and I do think he should be Hall of Fame status, but because um, the impact he's had in Detroit. But really, the playoff yeah. wins, and look who he's going against. Yeah, you can't can't ignore the num can't ignore the results. I mean, he put up great numbers throughout the season and broke records, but it didn't translate to winning football. Yeah, but sometimes you just got to go with the eye test. And when you see a guy dominate an entire league for that long and for that amount of time, and you can just see he's heads and tails better than everybody else that's in the league. To me, that's just like it's just blatant. Like that guy's a Hall of Famer because nobody else can do what he's done. Yeah, so. <laughs> I really want to, you know, kind of pivot real quick. What do you any predictions for the NFC and AFC championships this weekend? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the Packers and the NFC. I just think that the Bucks secondary is not that great, and I think Aaron Rodgers has played had an unbelievable season. What he did against the number one ranked uh, Rams defense was impressive. I mean, they have a three headed monster at running back, and Rodgers has uh, just. 50 touchdowns and five interceptions is insane. And he's played great. And I think the Bucks obviously needed four turnovers to help them win that game. I don't expect Aaron <laughs> And then the, the, I'm going to go with the upset. I'm going to go with the Bills. I think, Ooh, I man. don't know, there's something about Kansas City that just doesn't feel as good or dominant as they have been. And then we just don't know about the health of Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to go with the Bills in a big upset. Wow, yeah, that would be a massive upset, too, especially if Mahomes plays. If Mahomes doesn't play, then it's like, all right, I can understand that they won this game, even though Michigan's own Chad Henney could lead them to victory. <laughs> We're on the Chad Henney bandwagon here, if you couldn't tell. Listen, Rob, I know you don't classify Tom Brady as the GOAT, but where do you classify Chad Henney on the list? <laughs> <laughs> He's the fofo. No, I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, Rob, um, we also got to get your opinion on this. It's it's not really sports-related, but it just happened this morning, and I know that when you were in Detroit, you were involved in not just sports, but more of the culture of the city and everything that happens inside the, the city limits. What do you think of Kwame getting his pardon from Trump? Yeah, very interesting. I mean, I don't know the connection. I, I, it surprised me a bit. I mean, obviously, earlier... Last year, we heard that he was going to be released. You remember that? That was floated out there, so it wound up coming. Um, and good. I mean, if Kwame can get out and turn his life around and, uh, you know, do some positive things, he was going to be uh, a big part of Detroit. And when he became the mayor at 31, he, you know, there was big aspirations. Some people really thought that he maybe had a chance to be president one day. So maybe he can uh, pick up... Uh, and 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 get righted and and do the right thing and make Detroit proud again of Kwame Kilpatrick. You think he's going to return home to Detroit? I don't know. That's a good question. That's a good question. Um, maybe not a maybe not immediately, but maybe at some point. I mean, you know, home is home, and at some point, you know, you want to like LeBron went back to Cleveland, so maybe Kwame will come back to Detroit. Well, hey. um, I can see it happening, man. I, I can't see Kwame existing anywhere else but Detroit. Like, he is Detroit personified. Whether what happened you agree with or not, and he's served his time at this point, but when you think Detroit, you think Gators, you think, you know, you think the Buffs, and you think Kwame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those things all go together. Um, you have another question? Actually, I got a question for you, Rob. And, and no, once again, not sports related, but Corey related. Do oh, you have God. a good Corey story <laughs> that you could tell us? Just you know, even if it's just complimenting the hell out of this guy. Like, is there any time he screwed up? Is there any time that he he didn't show up on time? <laughs> like, we we want some dirt on Corey because he's he's just like a perfect worker all the time. He that that's who he is. He was that when I first met him. Always. Uh on time always about his business i'm not surprised he's a worker he's a go-getter and again um i admire guys like that like like when we met and and he forced the issue about you know telling me what he wanted to do and and how he could get involved and you know guys like that are guys who make it a lot of people they wait around and hope that someone's going to pick them that's not how it goes and especially in this business you got to have a guy who's who goes after it so i'm not surprised he's up there with you guys i'm happy he is 
and I think he gives a, a nice voice uh, for all people, especially Detroiters. Um, and I'm happy. I'm thrilled on where he is, and the sky's the limit for Corey. If you could give him one piece of advice right now, what would it be? Uh, go to my barbershop, Sporty Cuts, and get a haircut. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I was literally just texting. I literally uh, put my barber in the chat like, hey, Moose, I got to get in the barbershop. I'm looking bad up here right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. He knew you were going to be yeah, out I with him today, it, too, man. You know what? I will say this. He's like big brother, but also sometimes the imparts fatherly advice because the same thing I hear him say, I hear my dad say the same thing. Like he just said it about the bar, about the bar, but my dad was like, dude, do something with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're on TV kind of, Corey, so uh, you got you to straighten up, man. Yeah. And thank you for that, Rob. Maybe, maybe he'll come in fresh looking tomorrow. I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you having me, and I have nothing but love for Detroit even though I'm in Los Angeles now, and my 20 years in Detroit were awesome. It's a big part of my career, and, uh, you know, I still have a barbershop on Seven Mile, and I'm, I'm still a part of the community, even though if I'm not living there now. So I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Thanks a lot, Rob. Appreciate it. Thank you, Rob. Rob Parker, um, I mean, you could list a million titles that he's had, but most of all, just kind of an ambassador for Detroit while he was here, for the, like you said, for 20 years. Thank him so much for joining us. Art, let's take a quick little break. We'll be back in about 30 seconds or so, and we'll talk a little bit more sports. Plus, I think there's a dog in the house with Detroit Dog Got Rescue. Dogs in the house. Dogs in the house.